Today, I'm revealing how I booked the $6,600 business class flight for just a couple hundred dollars and just 123,000 airplane points. Round trip from Seattle to Taiwan and on to Japan. I'm booking this for two people and flying mostly EVA's business class product. And so in this video, we're going over exactly how I earned the points, search for the award space, transferred points with a bonus, and exactly how I'm booking the ticket recorded live. Now, first up, the way I got my Aeroplan points is actually through Chase. Because Aeroplan and Chase are partners, if you have one of the Chase Sapphire cards, which I have the preferred, you're then allowed to transfer your points over from Chase to Aeroplan. And in my case, because I haven't had the ability or the time to travel abroad to really take advantage of these transfer options, my Chase point balance has hit almost 450,000 points before booking this flight. Because in my opinion, Chase is one of, if not the best type of points you can get for any type of credit cards. If you want to know the secrets of maximizing your chase points, I'll link a video up above for you to watch later. But in order to have earned those chase points, I did so through two main chase cards, the Chase Sapphire Preferred and the Chase Freedom Flex. In fact, just with the sign-up bonuses alone, those points are just about what's needed to cover this round trip flight. The Chase Sapphire Preferred when I signed up had a sign up bonus of about 75,000 points, but has had cases where it's gone up to as high as 100,000 points too. Then the Chase Freedom Flex had a bonus of 20,000 points, but also elevated five times points for spending in groceries for the first year. You can see how easy it is to accumulate over 100,000 Chase points just like that. All right, so now that we went over how to get enough points in the first place, let's go over how to actually search for the award space. Award travel is not easy. Yes, you can get a lot of great points and great redemptions, but only if you put in the work or have a lot of flexibility or just plan really far in advance. For this trip, it probably took me four, six, or even eight hours across the last week, not to mention the countless hours trying to absorb all the information needed for award travel, and I'm nowhere near the best in the space. All right, so for this trip specifically, I use a tool called Cowtool, which was created by a user over on the Flyer Talk forums. Basically, it's a really cool tool that lets you input a lot of different data, like your origin, your destination, your time range, and a whole bunch of other settings, and then spit out what type of flights are actually available. And it does this by searching Aeroplan, so it's able to see a whole bunch of Starlines airlines like ANA, Asiana, and EVA. That said, Caltool is far from the only tool out there, and definitely not the most popular. There's more recent ones like Points.me or the tried and true Expert Flyer, which both cost money, but are probably more powerful than Caltool. Or the good old fashioned way and searching on the airline websites themselves. But not all airline website searches are equal. For example, I think Star Alliance members can see most of each other's award space, but that said, the UI is not the same. Like if we look at ANA's UI, it's kind of clunky in my opinion, where even pressing backspace and then searching again can really mess things up. And then there's Aeroplan, which I think is pretty smooth, or even using United, which gives you a full calendar view. All right, so with that said, why did I choose to book with Aeroplan in the first place? Well, usually if I wanna to go to Asia, this is not my first choice because going to Asia around the same time, using ANA would only cost me 95,000 points and a few hundred dollars in surcharge. And they also allow stopovers with some restrictions at no extra cost. Whereas on Aeroplan, the same type of cities will cost me 75,000 points each way and require an additional 5,000 points for a stopover. That means for my itinerary, that's about 160,000 points. Now, there's a few reasons why I'm doing this. First, there's an ongoing bonus of 30% if you transfer chase points over to Aeroplan. So instead of 160,000 points, I just need about 123,000. Two, ANA only allows you to book for people in your immediate family or two degrees of separation. And because I'm going with my partner, I technically can't book for her, but I don't know to what extent ANA actually enforces this. Third, Chase doesn't actually transfer to ANA, only American Express MR points do. But looking at data points online, the MR to Aeroplan transfers can take a couple days, whereas Chase to Aeroplan is instant. All right, so with that said, let's jump right in and start the booking. So like I said earlier, I use Cowtool to do a lot of my searching. And because I know my origins and destination, I can actually just go ahead, zoom in here and plug them in. So let's just say one passenger for now. I'm flying from Seattle over to Taipei and I give a small date range 
of times that I'm available to fly. And then we just press search. Now that it's done loading, we can actually go down and see all the available flights for that date range. So here we see that on the 23rd, 24, 25, and 27 from Seattle to Taipei, um, on BR25, which is BA in this case, J class, which here J means business. And I also want minimum two passengers as well as maximum number of segments, one because I want direct flights. So here I see that, okay, the day on the 25 works for me and there's two seats. So I'll note that down as um, on the first leg of my trip. And then also if you want to see it on Aeroplan Act um, itself, we can just press the ac.com link on the right side, load it up, and then we'll see the business class ticket uh, right here. Okay, cool. So now if we go back, maybe we want to find a return flight from Taiwan over to Seattle. So we can plug that in here. And let's say for the dates you want sometime late May to early June. Just plug that up instead of comma, we'll do colon and then search for the flights. Give it a few minutes. Cool. So now we can scroll down, we can see that there's a bunch of flights. Maybe that's uncheck economy, uncheck premium economy. There's still a whole bunch here. We want maximum segments one, so direct flights. And then we see that Again, there's a whole bunch of times here with going from Taiwan to Seattle on EVA in J, so business class, and two seats each. All right, so now that I know there are available flights for each way of my trip, I know that Air Canada has an option where you can add a stopover at Main City for just 5,000 more points. So that's a lot of value if you want to say connect on another city during your trip. So we decided to add on Japan, but here's where things get complicated. Through all this searching, I can't find any award space in business class that will fly from the US West Coast over to Japan. Most if not all of the award space that's available flies through EVA to Taiwan. But even then, I was unable to find flights that go from Japan through Taiwan back to Seattle for the times that I wanted. So after a lot of searching, instead of going from say Tokyo through to Taipei and then back to Seattle, we decided to add a stopover in Japan, in Fukuoka. So that means we're flying from Tokyo over to Fukuoka for a couple of days. And then from there, we were able to find a flight that connects through Taiwan and comes all the way back to Seattle. So now that we know our itinerary, we can check the flight rewards chart and see that for partner airlines of this distance, it's 75,000 points each way. But because we're adding a stopover, it's 5,000 more points, so 80,000. That means each person, it will cost 160,000 points or 320,000 points for the two of us. But because Chase has a 30% transfer bonus, instead of needing an entire 320,000 points, we're only gonna need about 246, 247,000 points instead. That said, let's go over to Chase and then actually transfer the points. All right, cool. So now that I'm logged in and I'm on the Ultimate Rewards portal, I can see the number of points I have, as well as I can go to transfer to travel partners to see where I can transfer. As we can see here, there's a 30% bonus for the Aeroplan transfers until November 30th, 2022. So let's go over transfer points, select recipient. I already have my member ID in here. So if you don't have an account, Aeroplan is free to create. So just create it and add the number here. Let's go continue. And how many points? We said about 247,000 points over to my account. We will continue again and then confirm. Know that you shouldn't transfer these points unless you know you're gonna book because this is one way. You can't transfer backwards. So make sure you have a trip in mind before you actually do this. All right, so I will now transfer. All right, so now there's a confirmation that says I've transferred the number of points. I'll check my email. So my email says they're complete. So I'll just go over here. I'm already logged in. Let me refresh the Air Canada site. And I see that I have my 321,000 points already. So it's basically pretty immediate of a transfer. So now that we have our itinerary and we have a number of points, let's go in and actually plug it into the tool. So I want multi-city with stopovers and I want to book with Aeroplan points. I first want to go from Seattle all the way to Tokyo with a stopover in Taipei. And I know my travel dates already from searching with Cal Tool for what's available. So I'll just plug those in here. 
I remember it being, I believe, May 25th. Make a stop over at four. And then we'll go from Tokyo back to Seattle with a stopover in Fukuoka. And then here we will travel on the 4th with two days of a stopover. Search flights. All right, so while that was loading, I actually changed it to two passengers. So it should only show me flights with two available seats. So now on this first page, it's telling us to choose the different legs of our flight. So the first one is going from Seattle over to Tokyo with the four day stopover in Taipei. So just to make it make things easier, I'll choose one that has one stop or less, which is our stopover, which narrows it down to three options. When I'm presenting with these different options, I usually look at what changes between the three here. So it looks like this one is a airport difference. And these ones are a different flight from Taipei to Tokyo. So in these cases, I like to check the details to see what type of airline we're flying. In this case, this is a 787, and that's the same here. So no major difference. And then for me, I don't really like to wake up too early. And even though these are both pretty early, I'll take as late as I can. So I will choose this one at 8.50. I'll select that and lowest reward. Cool. So now we're on to leg number two. And so we can see that we are flying from Tokyo to Fukuoka for a two-day stopover and then back to Seattle. Looking through, it looks like we're pretty limited to the first three options here because these are the ones that are flying through Taiwan. And so between these three, it looks like the flight from Fukuoka to Taiwan and Seattle are the same between the three. So again, I'll check what airliner we're using for each of these three flights in the first leg. Here we're seeing that it's a 787, the 777 here is 200, and another 787 here. I did a bit of research on the side and saw that the regional 777s are actually not as nice as the 787 Dreamliners, so I'll stick to one of the Dreamliner flights here, which is the first and the third. And again, because I don't want it to be that early, I'll probably choose this one at 940. So I'll select that. Note that it says things like, oh, 92% in business class. The reason it says that is not all of these flights are business and only 92% of them are according to distance. So the short two hour flight is in economy, but the longer flight is actually in business. So we'll just continue on here. Here you can just check, you know, triple check because it'll cost money to actually cancel or change flights. And if we go down to redemption options, we can see exactly 320,000 points with about $300 in Canadian for the charge. You can do all points only, but this is valuing your points at about one cent per point, which I value my points more than that. So I would rather pay $300 instead of about 33,000 more points here. That said, reviewing this, everything looks okay. You can view the price breakdown if you really wanted to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and continue. All right, so there were a bit of technical difficulties where for some reason it was giving me an error. So instead of booking all the segments together, it seems like it will let me book from Seattle going to Tokyo with the Taipei layover first. So I'll go through that here. So it looks like we can choose seats here. So let's see, we can probably change it later on, but because we are going together, I'm gonna choose one of the middle seats. Probably three, row three is good. Next, economy. All this loads will go through. It's pretty wide open. For now, I'm just gonna choose again some seats here. Let's just leave the middle open. Continued payment. All right, so here's our trip summary. Like I said, I'm only booking the way out first. So from Seattle through Taipei to Tokyo, passenger names, just reviewing the trip summary again with a payment summary down below. So I'm gonna go ahead, scroll all the way down fill up my payment info, and then finalize this purchase. Nice, booking confirmed. And now I will go ahead and try and book the return trip, and I'll let you guys know if that works out. Hey, Kevin from the future here. So I wasn't able to get the Tokyo with a stopover in Fukuoka back to Seattle working. So instead, I'm just gonna be booking the leg from Fukuoka back to Seattle, and then instead, pay a cash fare from Tokyo to Fukuoka, giving
given they're only about $100 per seat. That means I'm also going to be saving 5,000 points because I'm no longer using a stop over here. So for two seats, it will only be 150,000 points plus some fees. All right, so I got to the last page, just confirming my details and then going through the payment. All right, so there's a confirmation. So I'm officially booked for the entire round trip with just a cash fare needed between Tokyo and Fukuoka. All right, so you basically saw step by step how you go from searching the flights to actually booking them through Aeroplan. That was a lot of different steps and a lot of info, so let me summarize. So I first got my Chase points through Chase cards like the Chase Sapphire Preferred and Chase Freedom Flex, primarily through the sign-up bonuses, but also some spending. Then I transferred my Chase points over to Aeroplan with a 30% bonus that happened instantly. I also used tools like Cowtool or Aeroplan's own award search to find what flights are available for booking with points. I was also referencing the partner award chart to see about how many points I would need. And then once I found all the flights I wanted, I went into Aeroplan, went through the flow, did any stopovers if I needed to, and then confirmed my booking there. And to really get a sense of how much value I'm getting from this flight and my points, if we look at Google Flights, the flight costs about $6,600 round trip in business. So $6,600 in costs, minus about $335 in fees Canadian, so about $250 USD, that's $63.50 in dollar cost. Using about 123,500 points, that puts us at over five cents per point in value. Not too shabby. It's not the highest redemption in the world. I think it's still really good because I personally value my points at an average of about two cents per point. So this is more than twice that value. And so if you want to do the same and start your chase journey, go on and check out this video where I break it all down. I'll see you over there.